What is going on FT3000 back in the place to be and welcome to Duet Night Abyss. Now before we begin, today's video is brought to you by Duet Night Abyss. So if you want to stay up to date as this game gets closer and closer to global launch, go down in my description, down to the pinned comment and follow the referral links down below. So let's go ahead and get started. Currently Duet Night Abyss is in a technical testing period and because it's in a technical testing period, I focus more on the what FG, the technical aspects of the game and not so much on the story. I'm sure that's the reason FG, <laughs> it was. Now real time the reason why I wanted to point that out because even though the game does have a main story campaign tons of side quests NPCs and overarching story all of that it's all here but again seeing that this is a technical test the voice acting and the sound effects all of that stuff hasn't been intertwined in the story just yet so even though you have these really awesome in-game cutscenes they don't have the voice acting yet so it's not the full package so it doesn't really feel fair to critique the game on that because I am sure all of this is going to be added as we get to future and future betas as we get closer to global launch but i will say based on what i've seen so far these in-game cinematics are quite hype even in complete silence so i cannot wait for them to get fully fleshed out in the future So with that being said, in this video, you ain't gotta worry about spoilers or anything like that because we're not gonna focus too much on the main story campaign, only the technical aspects, but there is one technical aspect of the side story quest that I did find quite intriguing. Unlike a lot of other games in this genre, here in DNA, the side quest NPCs actually have a quite a bit more fleshing out than you're used to seeing. Every single side quest NPC that I ran across had multiple different dialogue options that actually led to dramatically different outcomes based on how I approach the quest and going even a step beyond just having dialogue options you can actually respond to the NPC the way you would want to so let's say an NPC is like really really sad I can actually respond to that NPC with empathy and run a skill check using that empathy to maybe convince that NPC that the item that they need to give me they just need to give it to me out of the kindness of their hearts instead of me having to attack and kill them for it right and like I said this was the case for every single side quest NPC that I ran across so I cannot wait to see how much further this system goes in the future as skill checks get harder and harder maybe you have to kind of navigate that in a creative way so very interesting to see and like I said completely unexpected in a game like this all right so with that massive disclaimer out of the way here we are live in game as we go through a few more aspects of the technical test now as far as what I was able to complete I did the entire main story that was available in the technical test the characters that are currently available are Brennanika <laughs> you don't sound too confident FG no nah, dude that's how you pronounce it I definitely have this one Rebecca and after just simply logging in two days in a row it looks like we're gonna get yet another character named Lynn who's the target today so as far as the actual designs themselves, I am sure you'll be able to find a waifu or a husbando that'll fit your needs here in this game. The characters also do come with a degree of dress up as well. So you can put goofy things on their heads, uh, on their eyes. What is this? Like little belt accessories as well. Um, some back pieces. So if I want to have some samurai swords back there and every single character has a form of unique aesthetic as well. Every single character also has an elemental attribute as well. So you can see Rebecca here is Hydro. The new character Lynn we just picked up is Pyro. And my girl here is Umbra. The Characters here in Duet Night Abyss also have weapon proficiencies. Now do keep in mind that these weapon proficiencies are just suggestions. Now if you use dual pistols or if you use pole arms on these characters, you will get an attack bonus, but you aren't actually forced to. So if you find yourself with a really good sword that you wanna use in Rebecca, even though her proficiency is pole arm, you absolutely can do that. Or you can equip her with a pole arm, a sword, whatever you wanna do. I really love that flexibility of being able to use any melee weapon and any range weapon on any character you choose. So as long as you acknowledge that some weapons and characters are going to min-max together more effectively than others, you can kind of customize these characters completely as you see fit. So since we just got this brand new character, let's go ahead and get Lynn equipped so we can jump into combat so I can show you more about the game itself. So very straightforward when it comes to upgrading your character, you have in-game materials which will allow you to level up your character. So, so we'll go ahead and level up Lynn all the way up to level 20. And in order for me to break through to the next level, I'm gonna go ahead and have to find myself some flame lizard scales that I can find in commissions, which are gonna be your tried and true daily resource grinds. Same exact thing applies when it comes to upgrading skills as well. Make sure you have the gold, make sure you have the in-game materials. And just like leveling up your character, your skills, you also 
level up your weapons. Once again, very straightforward using in-game materials. And finally, one last aspect that we need to touch on before we get this character ready for combat are gonna be the demon wedges. So this is gonna look real familiar if you played other types of games in this genre. So think things like symbols, runes, things of that nature. But one really unique thing about demon wedges in this game is that here in Duet Night Abyss, unlike 99% of other games that are in this genre, you don't have to have like 10 sets of demon wedges across your character. So check this out. You can see right over here, I have Pan Spectrum. I only own one of these, right? Keep that in mind. I only have one. But if you see here, Rebecca's using that same exact Pan Spectrum. And my girl over here is using that same exact Pan Spectrum. So in theory, let's say you have a really good set of demon wedges. You can have that same exact set of demon wedges equipped across all of your characters all at once, all at the same time. Pretty cool. Now, outside of the main story and the side quest, you're going to have a thing called commissions. These are going to be your tried and true daily resource grind. So you can see here, this is for coins, EXP, ascension materials, character demon wedges, weapon demon wedges, versatile materials, and then skill up materials. And all of these commissions actually play slightly differently. So let's start off with my favorite commission type called capture. So this is going to allow us to farm for character demon wedges. Currently, I'm level 20, so I'll go ahead and up this up to level 20. You can do this solo or matchmaking so you will be able to do this multiplayer and this is going to make a lot of sense once we jump into the game in order to start this commission you're going to need stamina and this game is called synergy all right so here we are inside the capture commission once again this is my favorite type of commission it's very straightforward you see that red dot over there that's an enemy i gotta go defeat that enemy and capture him very straightforward but the reason why i wanted to show off this commission is because it gives me the opportunity to show you how you traverse the map here in duet night abyss now in this game you actually don't have a sprint button so right now i'm holding down shift yeah, you do these little cute dashes, but you do not sprint. So this is your movement speed. This is, this is all you got, unless you do this little cute maneuver called the Helix Leap. In this game, if you wanna travel large distances, you have to kind of master this thing called the Helix Leap. So basically it's like control space bar, control space bar, control space bar, and this will allow you to basically go across the map really, really fast, which, which is what you're gonna to need to do because some of these matches, and some of these maps actually have different types of time objectives as well, right? So, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and take this opportunity to do a little bit of combat, shall we? So with my left, Left click I can do some basic melee attacks as you guys can see here I can also hold down the button as well to do kind of like a charge up attack if I go right click I switch to my ranged attack once again I do love the fact that every single character in this game can use any melee weapon any ranged weapon that they want right I can press R to reload and I'm back at it with this nice little grenade launcher you love to see now when it comes to skill based attacks in this game this game doesn't actually have a true cooldown system so what that means is is as long as I have a thing called sanity, which is basically, I, I guess you can call it like magic points or something like that if you want to. As long as I have sanity, I can continue to spam abilities. All right, so there goes my enemy target right over there and a perfect opportunity to show off the sanity system. So you can see right here, I have 120 stamina. My E skill only takes 28. So once again, I can just spam this until I actually run out of stana, uh, sanity, excuse me. <laughs> Let's go ahead and go ahead and capture that target. Moving on over, moving on over. And then we'll go ahead and activate our Q, which is gonna be our ultimate. Now, certain characters in this game actually have two weapons depending on their ultimate skill. So that's that ability right over there. Let's go ahead and switch to my range, bring you down. He's captured, F key him to capture the enemy. Now, if you're under attack, you will not be able to capture him. And there you go, that is the capture commission. And once again, you can do this solo and in multiplayer. It's all over. So now let's show off a different character in a different type of commission. This is very straightforward. This is gonna be defense, right? So basically, I just need to hold down the point as we get attacked by tons and tons of waves of enemies. Here's Rebecca's left click. She is a hydro type, as you guys can see here. I love her ultimate, check this out. She can also lay down summons here as well. No violent contact. And just like I mentioned before, she can also use any ranged weapon, any melee weapon, whatever you want. 
And materials that you find out in the world aren't just for upgrading your character, you can also use them for crafting as well. So let's go ahead and teleport to our sanctuary, which is going to be our home base. So here's our little blacksmith that lives inside of our sanctuary. We can do start forging. You can see here, you can forge different types of materials, including weapons as well. So this system here will easily let you know exactly which materials you need to craft said item. You can see exactly where they drop, or you can see, hey, this doesn't drop anywhere. I need to actually forge it. And a bunch of those forgeable materials are gonna come from a gameplay mode called Nocturnal Echoes. This is basically a boss battle style commission where you battle against bosses that you defeated in the main story. Now, unfortunately in the technical test, multiplayer was not available. I'm sure you were mighty hard broken mg <laughs> dude i was sometimes i like to team up <laughs> but multiplayer was not available but not to worry do keep in mind this game does allow you to summon a couple of your husbandos and waifus that you've unlocked as companions to battle alongside you and it looks like we unlocked another character as well is fushu dude i want some fushu <laughs> all right let's go ahead and upgrade her and get her ah she's only gonna be level eight so we'll do some low level commissions this time around we'll go ahead and switch to a pole arm instead now the great thing about these weapons that i've seen thus far they're not just glorified stat sticks these weapons actually have a pretty prominent weapon passive effect so you can see here for this weapon over here attack speed plus 20 when performing a normal attack splits the attack into three hits right that is completely different from this over here which just gives you bonus damage based on elemental bonus effects which is completely different from this weapon over here which basically allows you to use crit damage to restore your sanity and for this one I'll go ahead and switch to our assault rifle and then we'll go ahead and run the exp commission so I can actually level this character up all right let's take a look at our girl here Ooh, look at our girl Oh, <laughs> oh my, oh, she is just aggressive. Shout out to Fushu. All right, she has a, she has a summon, a little, a little a water wind globe, probably a wind globe, right? And then we have Q. Very, very nice. She is just aggressively fast. Oh, check this out. You guys ready for some gamer mode? I have to do this in 50 seconds. I gotta do it at least in 50 seconds. <laughs> Got him. Here's my assault rifle right over here. You do have ammunition, but enemies drop ammunition so often that I've never had an issue just being like completely out of ammo with no reprieve. So you should be fine when it comes to that. And basically from here, I just need to continue defeating enemies, getting serum and making sure that this little device over here continues to tick upwards instead of downwards. Right now, my serum is going down, but don't worry, I got this. Everybody relax. <laughs> I played this game before. You can see my serum is down, and I'll go ahead and fill it up, fill it up, fill it up. And I just need to make sure that I can hold this point down for three minutes total. And as you saw right there, every single time you complete a wave, you have the option to continue going. And I really like that. That's going to make me really, really hyped for multiplayer because you can kind of choose your own difficulty, right? Like, do you guys want to keep going deeper and deeper and deeper? Yes. Yes, we do. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. So if you did like what you saw here in Duet Night Abyss, don't forget, go down to the referral links below this video. Follow this game as it gets closer and closer to global launch. And I will definitely see you there. Look at that combo. 120 is the max, by the way. So off to a really good start so far. I really did like combat being able to switch seamlessly between melee and range all the range weapons thus far felt really really good I, I will say that some of the melee weapons lack a little bit of feeling of impact I definitely want to feel that viscerality when I'm slicing through enemies so hopefully they can kind of make that feel just a little bit more meaty in the future and also if they want helix sleeping to be this main form of travel when it comes to traversing stages they definitely got to make sure that that frame rate can keep up but as far as like actual raw fun factor this made me feel like I was just like kicking back and just like grinding through enemies means like I was playing an ARPG, right? So positive for me, you be the judge if it's a positive for you. <laughs> Just going crazy. So there you go, my friends. I am out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.